I'm going to attempt to keep this video as simple as possible, but I can't guarantee it. It might turn into a metric ton of nerdiness. So just on the off chance, might be worth grabbing some painkillers. I'm going to try and break down and simplify how different autofocus systems work. Really, there's three ways to do autofocus in a camera. You can use phase detection, you can use contrast detection, or you can use hybrid, which is just a mix of the first two anyway. Now, this video is just going to be looking at how they work and the pros and cons to each general way of doing them. It's not going to be looking at individual camera systems and saying which system's the best, because realistically, in modern cameras these days, the speed of an autofocus system is less to do with the style and the type of autofocus that's being used and more to do with, one, how well the autofocus algorithms are coded, two, the processing power of the camera, how quickly is it able to uh, run all the numbers of, every, of all the information that is being given, and three, you've got the lens to consider, how fast is the motor within the lens, how quickly can it react to everything that it's being asked to do. You've trashed me lighting. One mention of autofocus, and he's in. I have to say, this current studio setup is not ideal. He does not really fit on a chair. It was so much easier with the couch, because he could just sit next to me and come and go as he please. You don't fit! <sighs> right, where was we? Um. Something about autofocus. Quite ironic, really, that I'm talking about focusing with uh, actually being able to focus. Where the hell were we? So we'll start with contrast detection because it's the simplest to explain. Contrast detection tries to detect contrast. There we go, moving on. What, you want me to explain it more? Okay. So wherever two objects join or an object finishes and there's something else there, you get a pretty defining edge, which has a high amount of contrast. Now, as you shift the focus of a lens, the amount of contrast that different subjects display is going to change. To demonstrate this, I'm going to employ the help of a children's book. And no, it is not mine before you ask. So, white page, black writing. Now, if I keep this level with me here, you can see that all the writing is pretty clear. That's because it's in focus and all of the, the defining edges of the writing are nice and tack sharp. But if I move the plane of focus away from the book, suddenly now it's a bit more difficult to read. I know you're gonna say you can't read it because it's out of focus, but when a subject goes out of focus, those defining edges blur out, so the amount of contrast drops. So when a subject is in focus, it has the most amount of contrast. Anything less than that is out of focus, and that's what a camera relies on if it's using contrast detection. It will look at the particular part of the scene that it's trying to get in focus. The camera would measure how much contrast is in that particular part of the scene, and would then shift the focus of the lens slightly, and then it would then re-measure how much contrast there is. If the amount of contrast has increased, it knows it's going in the right direction, and it's going to shift it again and remeasure. If the amount of contrast had actually gone down, then it knows it's moving it more out of focus, so it's going to backtrack and start moving the lens back, and then remeasure, and then move and remeasure. There's pros and cons to this. The upshot is that by measuring contrast, it's very reliable. So when the camera gets peak contrast on that particular area, it's pretty surefire that your shot's going to be in focus. The downside, however, is that because a camera doesn't know how much contrast it's trying to find in the scene, it doesn't know how far out of focus it is, and it doesn't know in what direction either. So all it can do is move a little bit, measure the contrast, move a little bit more, measure the contrast. But even when it finds peak contrast, it doesn't know that that is peak contrast until it's gone beyond peak contrast and it sees it start to drop back off again, and then it can retract itself. So every time you focus with contrast detection, there's going to be a little bit of an overshoot and a pull back, and that, that kind of little bit of hunting. Contrast detection seems pretty straightforward. You're trying to detect contrast, but 
trying to detect phase? What's that all about? It works on the same principle as phases in audio, which you may or may not be familiar with. So just in case you're not, let's delve into that one as well. Imagine you have an audio wave that looks something like this. Then you have an identical wave, same frequency, coming from a different source. Now, if those waves are peaking and troughing at different times, they are known as being out of phase with each other. And then you get a weakened signal because when one signal is peaking, another one might be dipping, and they essentially cancel each other out. If you align those two waves so they're synchronized with each other, they peak at the same time, they trough at the same time, this is called being in phase and can actually help amplify the signal because they're then working together rather than cancelling each other out. Phase detection in a camera works on this same sort of principle. It relies on two different signal paths essentially and tries to get them to line up perfectly with each other. Now, that's probably not helped one iota at the moment. In fact, it's probably made things more confusing, but bear with me. Hopefully, it's going to make sense in a minute. You can try this with a little experiment right now using your own eyes. And I don't mean Google it and read up about it. You can either use two light stands positioned one behind the other, or just pick an object in the room somewhere across the room right now, close one eye, and hold your finger up so that it blocks your view of that subject. So with one eye shut and your finger up, you can't see the object on the wall behind you. But if you switch which eye you've got open, you can now see the object past your finger because you're getting a different perspective, a different angle. Now, if you hold both of your fingers up, one in front of the other, in the middle of your face and keep both eyes open like that, and focus on one of your fingers, you will notice that your outer focus finger has essentially a ghosting effect. And that's because with both of your eyes open, you're now seeing two slightly different versions of the same image. So in one version, your outer focus finger is more to the left, and in the other version, your outer focus finger is more to the right. As your outer focus finger gets closer to where you're focusing on, i.e. your other finger, they get closer and closer together, and as you pull your fingers further and further apart, your outer focus finger goes more out of focus, and the ghosting fingers will also get further and further apart. And once those two ghosts line up perfectly with each other, they're then essentially in phase with each other, and you see them as being in focus. That is in essence how we're able to get depth perception, because we know that the more out of phase something is, the, the more out of focus it is, the further away it is from whatever object we are currently focused on. And a camera using phase detection relies on exactly the same principle. If you can provide it with two slightly different versions of the same image, essentially a left eye and a right eye, it can compare those two images up and it will know if the subject is out of focus because the part of the image it's trying to focus on will either be in or out of phase. But not only that, because the camera is comparing up a left image and a right image, it's able to distinguish whether a subject is not only front focused or back focused, so it knows straight away what direction it needs to change focus on, but it can measure how far out of phase the subject is, and it can calculate how far it needs to adjust the focus to get the subject back into phase. The downside, however, is that it's not always completely accurate. Sometimes the measurements might be ever so slightly off. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, Dave, I get the idea of measuring depth with a left eye and a right eye, but how the hell does one camera with one lens and one sensor see two different images? Well, it does this by the image that's being projected into the lens. It looks at the left side of it, and it looks at the right side of it. But how it looks at the left and right side, that's where there's a little bit of trickery involved. Now, really, there's two different ways that camera manufacturers get around this. The first is what most manufacturers do, the tr more traditional way of doing it, which is that your camera sensor, all those lo little photodiodes, the pixels, they will take two photodiodes that are very close to each other on the sensor, and they will cover the left half of one and the right half of the other. So for that particular part of the scene, that tiny little bit, the camera is able to see the left side of it 
and the right side of it and measure whether it's in phase or out of phase. They then cover the whole sensor in all these little groups of split pixels so that they're able to measure lots of different little points. The downside of this particular method, however, is that those photosites that they convert into measuring phase detection can't be used to capture the light. Really, that's not much of a big deal, though, because if you imagine a 24 megapixel sensor, that's 240 million photosites, you might be talking about a few thousand that have been converted, so a very, very small percentage. And obviously the camera knows which pixels are essentially missing. So all it does is just fills in the blanks with whatever information is around it. The second way is what Canon have done with their dual pixel autofocus, which is a different way of doing it. What Canon have managed to do there is found a way to split each photosite into two halves. So each individual photosite is then essentially able to capture a left side and the right side and record the information as well. So in theory, phase and contrast detection solve each other's problems, which is when we then get onto hybrid detection, which you essentially uses a mix of each. So the camera is able to use the phase detection side of things to quickly ascertain how far out of focus and in what direction do we need to be changing. And then we'll then switch to contrast detection to just make those small fine tuning adjustments to ensure that the image is spot on sharp. I think that pretty much sums everything up. So as always guys, if you have any questions or queries, comment boxes down below. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, or at the very least it didn't give you a splitting headache, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.